testing. All right, I hope it's working. Um, hello, everybody. This will be a streaming about the current status of Open Arturian X6. If you don't know what Open Arturian is, it is an upper so open source engine which will enable people to create games similar to Ultima 6, but modern so they can be run in any device. And we have been developing this game. Uh, we started with a crowdfunding campaign over a year ago. And we are slowly advancing more towards having a first public version. There's already a version available for the project backers or funders. Uh, so what we are going to do first today is, well, if you want to learn more about Open Arturian, you can go to openarturian.com. Openarturian.com. In this site, you will find a uh, lot of information about the engine, well, some information about the engine, and the project status, the project plan, the instructions to create a game, which will be updated every time we release a new version, and also, well, a link to the blog, basically. I used to have the advancement on the project posted on my personal blog, but we now have our own website so here is where I will be posting the details about the new things that we do. So let's just give a quick look to what we have now. First let me confirm that I'm on the latest uh, branch or at, at the branch with the latest work. And here we are loading a map. So what we are using to edit map is tiled, the tile editor. And you can already create a map and load it into the game. If you let's just open that test map that we have. So you can see what I'm talking about. And in and in this test scenario, well this is the map. Basically um, you can see that it's a normal tile map with several layers. One of these layers is called solid tiles and it's like the mask of tiles that you can walk through. Another one is the mobs, which is basically the NPCs and the um, enemies that are on the map. And then we have a lot of other layers. All of the other layers are just normal layers which will be uh, I mean, the engine will just create the sprites for them. So here we can really uh, create, say for example, if we want to add some rats into the game, we can just use this tile, which represents a rat, and then we can just put some rats around here. Then we will just rebuild. Rebuilding, it's taking some time because of the streaming problem. <laughs> it's taking longer than I expected, okay. And then we refresh and we make sure that it's there's no caching issue because sometimes the scenario gets cached so, and we still don't have any mission to prevent that but because we are very early of course we are going to reload And we are going to be walking up there in a moment and see the rats. Just want to also 
explain some of the other features that we have now. So we have support for rudimentary uh, scenes, I mean like a text that you can use to show information about the uh, scenario. We do have movement, keyword movement, and we have enemies that chase you like these two guys. We have combat mode which is activated whenever you are hit or something or you can also trigger it manually. We can attack the enemies with melee and also range attacks. It was that attack was blocked. blocked. Range attack. We have conversations, so this is Chamino, this is a friendly NPC. Uh, these conversations have uh, keywords that we can use to uh, further uh, go through the conversation. We have support for very long texts, but they have to actually have to be pretty long in order for these to, to trigger. So yeah, we have a conversation system when, where we can start like unveiling all the stuff. Everything that is that I just explained is defined right now as JavaScript modules and in the future it will be just JSON files. It's actually pretty much the same. Um, so here you can see that in this data directory we have uh, the definitions for the items. Well, I will get to that in, in a minute. But we also have the definitions for the NPCs and all the dialogue, including the dialogue, fragments, the conditions for each fragment and variance of, of responses to a single keyword. The keywords are marked like this here. And there's a, a, a trigger system that can filter out uh, what kind of uh, or what uh, variant of the of the dialogue is shown and also can do stuff like uh, joining to the player or doing different things so if, if you see here this is the conversation with Samina and the by keyword is the special keyword because you can also trigger it Oh, actually, you, you still cannot do that, but in the future, you will be able to trigger it just by pressing enter without any keyword. So, this is a, uh, this keyword has uh, two variants, three variants, and they work in a cascade model. So, it will first check versus this condition. If this is the first conversation we have with Shamino, then it will use these options. But these are not just like normal options or normal, normal dialogue, but they have a special types. So this one will, will cause the current NPC to join your party. This other one will cause a flag to be set. This one will cause a conversation to end. So if you see, all these have this type and conversation at the end. So yeah, that's already supported. Uh, about the enemies that we just killed, they can also be defined in these files. So we have the sword soldier and the crossbow soldiers. We will find some crossbow soldiers further down the uh, map. This includes uh, defining the weapon that they have and the items that they start with. We already have a working um, system where the some some weapons can use ammunition or require using ammunition. So for example. For this crossbow soldier, they start with a crossbow and they start with 10 iron bolts that they need in order to be able to use the crossbow. And all these items are defined here. So you could change this and create a new test map. I mean, right now you cannot really create a full game, but you can create a test map. And well, the idea is to see what we need to do in order to be able to create a full game. So by we have so as I mentioned, there's a like a hybrid movement or acting system because when you are not in combat, it's it is it's almost real time, and we have players and we have a bug here. <laughs> uh, 
and I don't know why. That was that weird. Well, we have been doing some developments lately, so it's possible that it's currently a bit unstable. But I did not really expect that. And I think that may be caused by the rats that we added, but I'm not sure. Let's see if it breaks the game. Well, it kind of reset. Okay. Well, we also have a skybox which shows the current time of the day and uh, this bar shows the party members and their hit points. Yeah, there's something wrong with the rats. And that's weird because there's a rat already here. I think the problem is that I put them on the wrong layer. Yeah. That's the issue. Oh, so we're going to <laughs> correct that. We are going to delete these rats from the vegetation layer. And then we're going to add them to the mobs layer, which is where they really belong. We're going to need to rebuild and it's going to take a small time. Especially because I need a new computer with a better CPU, I think. Since we're streaming, it's eating up some processing power, I guess. Well, while it builds, what else can I say? Well, um, from here, what we built already. Deep left and top. I'm going to do a rage attack here. Ah, okay. I was going to anticipate the attack. <laughs> oh, okay, this is interesting. I can also we can also get items from the from the uh, from the. the world. Here are the rats. Due to some new thing that we added, they are not moving, but they should be moving. I mean, we have a very basic AI system for the mobs where they have an intent, and their intent here should be just walk around randomly. I also noticed that there's a problem with the pathfinding here, because we also have pathfinding. <laughs> So, uh, the mobs should in theory be able to overcome these kind of obstacles, but for some reason they are not doing it. Uh, so that's another thing to check. We can also attack this rat, which was, is very strong. <laughs> Died. Um, oh, we also have an inventory. Very basic, but it also shows like the number of items that you have. We're going to see that in a bit when I get a crossbow. Um, triggers, that's some kind of triggers that by proximity, so when you are closer to an NPC, you get this dialogue. This is just a sample dialogue, but it's also part of what we wanted to do with uh, creating a first scenario as part of the development of the engine. Uh, as you can see, it's sunrise, so the color of the sky has changed. And there are range attacks by the enemies. I'm too far away to throw the magic axe. For some reason, China joined me, but it's not showing up in the bar in the top. So I'm going to need to do some tests um, to see what's happening there because it used to work. I think that's one of the first things I'm going to do 
is checking that all the work that we did presently is correctly integrated. I'm going to let them kill me. But yeah, as you can see here, he ran out of crossbow bolts. And <laughs> right now, well, he's just doing nothing. So all these kind of tweaks are, are stuff that we gotta do. Like all these special cases, start covering them. And I think that will be part of the, of the first milestone. Finally, we did a lot of work with the game overflow so that the game doesn't crash and all the entities stop acting. So, for some reason, Chamino did not join me because you're supposed to get that game over screen only if the whole party dies. And Chamino did not die. Uh, that may be the reason why he wasn't showing up there in the status bar. And also the reason why why he wasn't doing proper pathfinding probably. But let's see. Join bar. Okay, this time he joined. I don't know what he did wrong last time. Let's see if pathfinding works correctly in this case. Right, so yeah, there's something wrong with it. Probably with the join uh, methods. I don't know. Okay, so basically that's where we are. Not sure if I am missing something. Um, and the next thing that I'm going to do in this stream is checking what are the next steps. So basically here in the old blog, I had a list of pending tasks for the milestone one because uh, we had uh, the idea of making a first part uh, which was backed by this plot line or this is a scenario so in the in the website we have the project plan and the project plan defines that we, are, we were set to finish the medicine one by November 9 that is a couple weeks ago almost so we are a bit beyond already behind sorry we are a bit behind already uh, most of this is done so we are displaying the intro we are starting the game on a forest clearing in combat mode that kind of changed a little bit but you can still get into combat mode we do have a day and night sky indicator Chamino walks to the avatar and joins the party there is a combat where we are taking turns to attack each other party members can move around we do melee attacks Shamino does range attacks, we did not see that in the demo, but he, actually we can do that now. Well, one of the things is, is that you will see here that now that he correctly joined the party, we can actually uh, move him around and do range attacks like this. So there he shot a bolt. For instance, so that one is actually done. Um, the enemy soldiers use melee and range attacks. So what we are missing here is these two things: is uh, that after two turns, Chamino is shot by a ma magic bolt by Lord Asteroid and is taken out of combat. Then a cutscene happens, and then uh, party the party is transported to Ayala's hut. That is a different map. So this is what we are planning on doing. And I'm going to cut the streaming here because I want to keep uh, this uh, section of the current status and then uh, work in adding some of this that is missing. So I will see you back in a bit. <laughs>